It's been a good season for two Devon football clubs. Exeter City have finally been promoted from the Skybet League 2 after 10 years in the division and at time of recording are actually top of the league and still within a shout of winning the title. Meanwhile, Plymouth Argyle flirted with a playoff spot before a 5-0 loss to MK Don seed them fall out of the playoff positions on the last day of the season. This will mean that the two rivals will find themselves once again in the same league as one another and this got me thinking. What would happen if both these clubs came into a huge amount of money at the same time whilst they were in the same league? Who would manage to get to the Premier League first? It's a question you've always wanted to know the answer to but never thought to ask. Or maybe I'm just biased because I was born in Exeter but now live close enough to Home Park that I can comfortably hear the fans on a match day from my house. Either way, I'm going to simulate my possibly insane scenario in Football Manager. In this universe, recent form inspires local businessmen to purchase both Devon clubs. Inspired by how they've been doing lately and seeing an interesting vision for the future. Both owners take on the role of a sugar daddy for their respective clubs and instantly give their managers a £100 million transfer budget for the season ahead. And now, the race is on. Which team will reach the Premier League? First. In season one of the simulation, newly promoted Exeter surprisingly finish in a better position than local rivals Plymouth. I would have expected Plymouth to be in or at least around the playoff positions again this season, but instead they find themselves down in 15th place with 20 losses from their 46 games. Looking at their results for the season, they didn't actually win their first game in the league until October. The rest of the season doesn't exactly seem fantastic form either. This poor run of early season form leads to real life manager Steven Schumacher being sacked in November after 330 days in charge of the club. Former Plymouth player David Fox takes over the Plymouth manager position after and helps lead Plymouth to the third round of the FA Cup where a difficult tie against Arsenal sees them bow out of the competition. Given the nature of this video as well, let's also take a moment to appreciate them battering another Devon club in the form of Torquay on the way to the third round. Plymouth were also knocked out early in both the Carabao Cup and the Papa John's Trophy. Transfer-wise, Plymouth have spent just over £3 million this season, with the bulk of this being on Dara O'Shea, a £2.5 million centre-back from West Brom. Their biggest transfer out this season was for Dan Scar, who joined Oxford United for £55,000. Meanwhile, Exeter had a slightly more successful season, winning their first League One game against Cheltenham and then picking up wins and draws throughout the season without ever going on either a long run of wins or losses. Much the same as Argyle, they didn't do anything fantastic in any of the cups, being knocked out of the FA Cup in the second round by Peterborough, the second round of the Carabao Cup by Ipswich and the second round of the Papa John's Trophy by Newport County because apparently this season Exeter were allergic to the third round of cup competitions. <laughs> Matt Taylor does enough to remain in charge, taking his time at the club up to almost five years by the end of the season. In terms of transfers, they've only spent £51,200 of their £100 million. I'm aware it won't be possible for these clubs to spend all their money at once due to financial constraints and also players actually wanting to join clubs of their reputation. But it does feel like Exeter have been a little bit conservative here. Maybe they'll spend a little bit more in season two in order to progress up the leagues. Well, they did end up spending a bit more with the signings of left back Connor Wood from Leighton Orient and Adelican from Lincoln costing £8,500 and 235 k respectively. They then made a bunch of free signings, including an agent Charlie Austin from QPR, before eventually splashing some cash with their marquee signing being Morgan Rogers, costing 1.3 million from Bournemouth in January. Also, quick side note, Charlie Austin actually did pretty well, scoring 10 goals in 23 appearances for the club and finishing on a 7.05 rating. He is retiring at the end of the season though, so this will be his only season at Exeter. 
At 21 years of age, Rogers has plenty of time to reach his full potential yet, and his full potential is decent. But I do feel that only three goals in 17 games when he's been playing as a striker in a front two is a bit of a letdown. Hopefully he'll come good next season and we'll start to see him banging these goals. Exeter are going to be relying on him with Charlie Austin leaving. Results wise, Exeter have done marginally better this season. And we can definitely see them starting to string together some longer runs of form now. But equally, they had a disastrous end to the season, only picking up three points in their last five games. This means they finish eighth and makes those last few games even more disappointing as four more points would have put them in the playoffs and talking of the playoffs that's exactly where Plymouth ended up finishing in third place one point behind both Cardiff and Peterborough Plymouth didn't spend a huge amount of money in the summer transfer window but did make a lot of transfers in general bringing in a total of 11 new players before the start of the season. Matty Longstaff joined the club from Newcastle and has actually had a pretty solid season as has Bryce Samba who arrived from Nottingham Forest in the summer transfer window. In January Plymouth continued to add to the squad with their biggest signing being Dylan and Levitt for three million pound from Sheffield United. Now this one actually confuses me a little as his match rating would suggest he is playing quite well and his price tag is on the higher end for Argyle but equally his agreed playing time is only as a fringe player. Maybe they're hoping he'll grow into the side or something? Much like Exeter, Plymouth had a pretty good season overall with a really, really strong August and September setting them up well for the rest of the season. That said, much like Exeter, as they got towards the end of their season, they dropped more and more points which eventually saw them finishing a bit lower than maybe they could have. A couple of more points in fact and they would have won the league. If we have a look at their past positions as well, they were actually second in the league and in the automatic promotion spots the week before the end of the season. Instead, a draw to Ipswich meant they had to face the playoffs, where unfortunately they lost 2-0 to Lincoln in the final. This means both Exeter and Argyle will remain in League One for a third simulated season, but surely one of them has to get promoted in season three. Well, Exeter City certainly didn't. I feel like if I walked up and gave Exeter City a hundred million pound right now, they would spend some of it. Meanwhile, FM22 Exit City really don't like that idea and instead seem to be spending their money like it's the last scraps they found down the back of the sofa. In season three, they spent a grand total of 500,000 pounds. Now, is that a big amount of money for the real life club? Most definitely. Is it a lot of money given the money they have? No not really and it shows looking at their squad it just seems to be lacking players with high current ability morgan rogers is arguably the best player currently signed to the club and he's still not really performing to the level he needs to with only 11 goals this season looking through their results we can clearly see exeter lost a lot of games this season 20 of them to be exact Add to that a further nine draws and Exeter find themselves in 13th place at the end of the season. Ironically, they started off fairly decently before an absolute nosedive where they just sank down the leagues, falling as low as 21st at one point, just above the relegation zone. It's also resulted in them sacking not one, but two managers. Matt Taylor was sacked after six years and 168 days at the club and replacement Tom Heaton only lasted 62 days before he was also sacked. Liam Richardson took over in February and the team seemed to have done a bit better from there. Meanwhile, Plymouth have spent a bit more of a reasonable amount of money. Ronan Curtis is bought in from Portsmouth for 1.1 million. Uh, I am going to be honest though, this transfer doesn't look like good value for money. They also purchased Michael Ayakere from Rotherham for 1.7 million and bring in a bunch of free players and loans. 
including James Garner on a free, which is an amazing pickup for them. He's shown that this season as well. With eight goals and eight assists in 43 appearances, finishing on a 7.38 rating. I repeat, they got this man for free, which honestly just feels like stealing. The only thing I would say is a lot of their top players are on loan and eventually Plymouth are going to need to bring in permanent players of their own. And maybe that will be next season as they build a squad for the championship. Yes, Plymouth finished in second place, securing themselves an automatic promotion in season three. After a 1-0 loss to Exeter on the opening day of the season, Plymouth then went on a 10-match unbeaten run in the league. Although they had a bit of a poor patch of form in October and November, they settled themselves down again and went on an even better run, which only saw them lose three matches between January and the end of the season. They managed to get all the way to the semi-final of the Papa John's Trophy as well before being knocked out by Liverpool. All in all, it's been a successful season for Plymouth, but a bit of a letdown for Exeter. It's going to be interesting from here to see if Exeter can pick themselves up and continue to chase Plymouth up the league or if Plymouth are now going to storm their way up through the championship and get to the Premier League before Exeter even realise what's happened. In season 4 of the simulation and their first season in the championship, Plymouth spent a grand total of £27.5 million on new players. First up is £5 million signing Traore, a right attacking winger from Luton. He's actually had a fantastic first season, providing 6 assists in his 24 league appearances and finishing on a 7.12 rating. Arranging their transfers in order of price, we can see that their most expensive signing this season is Dyke Steel from Middlesbrough for £6.5 million. Although this is a questionable transfer when you look at his attributes, his current ability and his performances this season. I wouldn't be surprised to see him back out the door in the opposite direction this summer. Argentinian striker Lopez arrives at the club for 5.25 million from Bournemouth. Left winger Wahai arrives from the same club for 4 million. Malik Wilkes is purchased from Hull for 2.3 million. And goalkeeper Marek Rodak comes in from Fulham for 2.2 million. There's also further purchases of Regan Charles Cook, Edwin Anderson, Bradley Stretton, Stefan Bradgetic, Hamelanian, Joe Wallacott, Claus Anglinghouse, Simon Stefferson, Nicola Maru, Ben Anderucci, Darren Rye, and Marcus Alonso, which is a bit of a strange signing considering he's definitely in the twilight of his career and showing up as a Sky Bet League One player. But I guess he does bring championship winning pedigree to the team and hopefully veteran leadership. So, with all these signings and a rebuild of the team, how did Plymouth perform? Well, new signing Wahai tops the goal scoring charts with 13 goals, followed closely by Lopez with 11, although Lopez did score his 11 in a lot less games. Farias also contributes a further 11 goals, and the assists seem to be a largely team effort without anyone really standing out. Ability wise, James Garner is showing up as the best player, and there are a few players who are also showing up with some decent potential. These performances mean Plymouth finished 19th in their first season of championship, 7 points above the relegation zone. Plymouth got off to an okay start, not getting many wins but that's to be expected when you are newly promoted. However, a particularly bad patch of form at the end of December and January saw them go on a 7 match losing streak and that was enough for them to part ways with manager David Fox opting to bring in John Terry as their new manager at the end of January. Things picked up a bit from there and they won four of their last five games of the season, which pulled them out of the relegation zone and ensured survival, so it will be interesting to see how he does next season. In the four seasons simulated so far, Plymouth have spent just over £32.5 million of their £100 million budget, leaving them with around £67 million left to spend. Meanwhile, Exeter have been a bit more conservative with their money, spending only £6.4 million of their 100 million pound budget. This season has seen them sign 11 new players but most of them are free transfers or loan. Their most expensive signing this season is right back Dion Sanderson from Oxford for 3 million pound and honestly he's Meh. Despite signing in January, he's only made four appearances for the club. After injuring his hip the day after he signed for them, sidelining him for three months. <gasps> Probably not what you want from your star signing for the season. Especially when your results look like this. Honestly, 
wow it's like they don't realize they have money to spend and yes alongside the transfer budget i have increased the wage budget so this isn't a case of them not being able to pay the players they sign it's like after years of not having any money they're now scared to do anything with it in case they have to give it back or maybe they just don't know that's how you buy players nowadays I have exit been getting players free in a pack of cereal for the past few decades and shout out if you are old enough to know what the heck that means by the way poor performances mean exit sack yet another manager in this simulation bringing stankovic to the club at the end of november and honestly this makes relatively little to no difference and they never actually leave the relegation zone after he takes over oh yeah i haven't actually mentioned that yet yet despite them having literally millions of pounds at their disposal exeter have somehow managed to get themselves relegated down to league two meaning plymouth pull even further ahead in the race to reach the premier league first honestly it doesn't look like Exeter are ever going to get there. In Season 5, however, they do manage to gain promotion back up to League 1, finishing in 5th place and then beating Crawley 2-0 in the playoff final. From a transfer perspective, they still aren't spending a lot of money. This season's total spends amounting to just over a million pounds and taking their total spend to around 7 million for the simulation so far. This isn't even accounting for players sold, which after last season's relegation equates to 5 0.25 million meaning they are probably breaking about even across these five seasons Dion sanderson morgan rogers sam snubs and five other players all left in the summer but reinforcements were bought in these were in the shape of Capizu, Brendan Galloway, Vincent Young, James Trafford and Tom James. Alongside a further four free transfers. Results wise they've obviously done reasonably well. Which has led to the manager being allowed to see out the whole season this time round. Now hopefully they can find their wallet and spend enough to be successful in League 1 next season. Meanwhile a short trip down the road John Terry is still in charge of Plymouth and has led them on a fairly successful campaign scrolling down the results page there is definitely a lot less red than in the previous season and terry has actually done it without spending bags of money taking a leaf out of exeter's book plymouth only spent money on one signing in the summer paying 4.3 million for begir omaragic looking at his report as well this is a very sensible signing as he's got the potential to grow into a good premier league player in the future and is already a leading championship player now the other signings are all loans or free transfers including Sam Greenwood from Leeds United who finishes the season as the club's top goal scorer with James Garner stepping up to help out his team with 13 assists Plymouth finish in ninth place 10 places above their previous season's placing they also actually got all the way to the fifth round of the FA Cup where they eventually knocked out by Aston Villa obviously not the point of this simulation but cool nonetheless will plymouth now be able to build on this next season and win the race to the premier league season six and the year 2028 for those of you keeping count and nothing has massively changed for either team exeter have sacked yet another manager with stanikovic leaving the club after two years and 11 days in charge an increasingly demanding board wanted him to be finishing it inside the playoff positions and the team's form had them around mid table in December. December, so he's replaced by Ian Barraclue, who leads them to a 7th place finish, 2 points outside of the playoffs. Signings wise, Exeter have continued to spend not a lot, with season 6 total amounting to 1.1 million. The leading signing this season is Kola Male, a 28 year old centre attacking mid, but he is only showing up as a leading Skybet League 2 level, which isn't ideal considering Exeter are trying to escape League 1 through the top of the table rather than the bottom. Their current best player is a homegrown regen. Showing as a three-star current ability, Alan Fielding could be the future at the club, provided they can actually get promoted before other clubs start to come knocking. Arranging the squad view by potential ability in the senior squad, the future definitely looks bright for Exeter, and I guess it is positive that they are focusing on some sort of youth development rather than buying their way to the top, but this does mean they are still lagging behind Plymouth. This is a sprint, not a marathon 
happen. And Exeter don't seem to know it, which I guess they actually don't because I have no way of telling them in the game. It's very much a nothing season for Plymouth as well, as they finish in 12th place with almost an identical number of points to the previous season. They spend £13 million throughout the two windows, with their most expensive signing being Matty Pollock for £7 million from Brentford. The other signing I would like to highlight is Dave Thompson, a 21-year-old left-back brought in from West Brom in January. Already a Skybet Championship player, he has the potential to be a Premier Division player and is already one of the better players at the club definitely one to keep an eye on. With neither club progressing as quickly as I would like, I've decided to take matters into my own hands. I'd assume after six seasons, word has got out that these two clubs hiding down in Devon have rich owners that have bankrolled them with a huge amount of cash. So I've increased both the club's star reputation by one star, which moves both of them up to a three and a half star reputation. Let's hope this will change something in season seven for these two Devon clubs. And it does indeed make a huge difference for both clubs. Exeter finally find their checkbook and spend almost £35 million bringing in 15 new players ahead of the new season. The most expensive signing is Adam McGrath, a £10 million signing from Reading and another one to keep an eye on for the future. Praxedes, a Brazilian midfielder, arrives from Southampton for £5.25 million. And Harry Winks, formerly of Tottenham Hotspur, is purchased for £3.5 million. Looking at the squad they definitely have a lot more players with a better current ability than last season to help them progress through the leagues and they're not relying on loans either in season seven these new signings allow them to have a much more successful season which sees them finish second in the automatic promotion spots meaning they will be playing in the championship next season in a bizarre twist though they sacked their manager at the end of the season stating that baraclau had become stale in his post I mean, he has just got promoted, but Exeter clearly don't think he did a good enough job and the days of Paul Tisdale remaining in the role for 12 years are long gone. A demanding board wanting their managers to win or face the axe. Honestly, it's a bit like watching Chelsea in this simulation. But how did Plymouth do? Well, they spent even more than Exeter, bringing in 17 new players for a cost of 55.5 million pounds, meaning they have now spent their full 100 million pounds that they were given at the start of this simulation. Obviously, they did also sell 13 million pounds worth of players, so they are fine in terms of finances. They bring in some fairly big signings, including Savio from Manchester City for just under 13 million pounds, Armini from Leicester for 6.25 million, and Andrew Fisher from Swansea for 5.5 million. The two most impressive signings for me here though are Ozan Kabak from Manchester City for 12 million pounds and Brendan Aronson from Leeds for 16.25 million as both of these players are already Premier League quality. Plymouth managed to get a few of their players scoring double figures this season as well including 18 goals from 25 appearances from Patrick Southam, a striker on loan from Manchester City. This allows them to lose only 10 of their 46 championship games this season, meaning they finish in third, three points behind Watford and automatic promotion. In the playoffs, they face Blackburn in the semi-final, winning 4-1 on aggregate, before a 2-1 win against Southampton sees them gain promotion to the Premier League, solidifying themselves as the top Devon club and the winner of this simulated race. Hopefully Plymouth can stay there and not come straight back down, but either way, they have done Devon proud and redeemed their 5-0 loss to MK Dons back in 2022, which cost them the chance of reaching the championship via the playoffs. And if you have watched this far, I assume you have enjoyed the content and I'd really appreciate it if you could drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Comment below and let me know how you think Plymouth will do in the Premier League and if it's something you want to see simulated in FM22 as well, let me know. Until next time, thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one and check out the video on screen until then. Bye!